of today and welcome to Umate. The school was built in 1954 by a world-renowned architect named Richard Nuecho. Unfortunately, the school was closed in 2012 by the Guam Department of Education. So the students now attend school in Marisa. They're working on trying to turn the school into a museum or a charter school. The San Inusco Church was first constructed on November 12, 1680 by Don Joseph D. Caruga under the direction of the Jesuit Mission. The church was made out of wood with a palm tops roof, but in 1769, the wooden structure was replaced by stone, but still had a palm tops roof. The building was destroyed in 1779 by an earthquake. It was built again in 1849. After two more earthquakes in 1862 and 1902, the original church building was never rebuilt. Today, the San Ysidro Church ruins can still be viewed because our people believe in our, in our ancestral spirits. This site is sacred and highly respected. We ask that you also respect the site as the answer. The San Ysidro Catholic Church is a prominent focal element in the village of Humasac and it was constructed in 1939 by the residents of Humatac under the direction of Father Bernabe D. Caseda, a Spanish Capuchin. The architecture of the San Ignacio Catholic Church mirrors the old stone church with its massive mason walls and windows. Um, in 1999, the church was rehabilitated by the Guam Preservation Trust due to multiple typhoons and the Great Earthquake in 1993. San Ignacio Church is one of the two oldest churches still in use on Guam and is re registered under the Guam National Register of Historic Places. And it is 334 years old. <laughs> So the Palazzo de Umatic or the palace, the governor's palace in Umatic was um, was just uh, the governor's summer palace. So every every summer he would come down here from the palace in Aganya through the El Camino Real or the Royal Road. He would come down here for two months and wait as the big galleon ships like these come into Umatic Bay and bring in all the uh, goods and supplies and soldiers. And he would uh, he would want us to be here when they bring in the stuff. So. Yeah, and I think even at one point it became the capital of Guam for two years because the the Plaza de España was destroyed due to earthquakes, so they were rebuilding it. So this actually became the, the seat of government for two years, and there's still a, you can still see some remnants of stone the foundation, the stone foundations and the clay roofing and flooring. So these guys would take you to the back to be this way. So this is the stone foundation of the old Palacio de Matic. This is the, the back wall. So this, this is where it ends. And so the entire place over here was, was the Palacio. The Palacio is basically two stories high. And like you said, he covered the whole place right here where the church is located at now. And um, all the storms and the earthquakes that um, you know caused it to erode. And if you actually go in there, there's clay shards. There's still things that are there from Back then? In the 1600s. In the 1600s, yes. The Matic Outdoor Library is the first public library built in the southern part of Guam, and it is the only library of its kind to ever exist on Guam. The structure here has a heart shaped piece that serves as a commemorative placard, and the inscriptions here read accomplishments made under the leadership of Mr. F.K. Sanchez. And on the base of the heart, it also says, erected October 1933 by the Umatic people. Fort Santo Angel was built in 1737. It was one of the earlier forts built to protect the Spanish galleons from pirate ships as they moored outside Umatic Bay for provisions and rest. The Spanish galleons would visit Guam at least once a year to restock on food and supplies as they sailed to Acapulco from the Philippines. Fort Santa Angel was second of four Spanish fortifications built in the southern village of Humana in the midst of the Spanish gallantry era. The fort was constructed on top of a large rock at the entrance of, of Humana Bay. From that vantage, the, the fort could defend the anchorage and the entrance of the bay from increasing numbers of non-Spanish galley ships navigating to the Marianas Island. The fort lost its accessible stairs due to recent earthquakes. Still evident, however, are the walls and esplanade or stone pavements. No evidence remains for it. Fort San Jose in the hillside of Guam. You can go halfway up, you can walk halfway and the stairs would still be okay. 
but then on the other half you're gonna have to go for a hike so um, it's really not recommended because it's not really stable and we have nobody's been up there for a while so fix it up and this will conclude our tour we hope you enjoy your visit and our village please proceed to the bay area or the event grounds of the bay area thank you have a good day Thank you.